Hey, how are you guys? I hope you are enjoying the WOS conference. The, the light is on my face, I cannot see the venue, but it's so awesome. I'm David Navarro, Creative Director at Sync Studios, and perhaps some of you know us from our old name, where we were called Steam Digital. And in January this year, we changed it into Steam Studios. The particulars are still the same. I'm going to tell you the classic agency thing. We have five offices in New York, in London, in Los Angeles, in Paris, in Shanghai, and we are around 100 people. We're still a small studio, I think. And we have people from different backgrounds, culture, and we have a lot of dogs. I'm a cat person, so you can imagine how fun it is for me. <laughs> uh, and the mission is still the same. It's like we help forward thinking clients to succeed in digital culture. And it's that world, digital, that we did from our name, that today has a complete, total, different meaning. If we just travel back in time to 2009, when Sting started, this was us. Woo! This was pure happiness. I'm, like Peter told, uh, uh, told it, I'm pretty old, actually. I, I remember those flash days that were super awesome. So, right? So, digital at that time meant like websites, apps. You could see like people, like companies shifting the budget from, from TV to, to digital. That was the days. And even for us, for Stink, when when we started, we, our ambitions went far beyond digital. We invented the mannequin challenge. Cool. Uh, but in the first, the previous, the very first project, sorry, it was Phyllis Carousel for Travel TV in Amsterdam. It was a film. It was an interactive film for sure, but it was a film. And it is like a, a signature of our studio that we are like super, super multidisciplinary and we are like to do one million things different, not only just one, one digital thing. But let's travel back to today in this moment, and talking about digital, it feels kind of embarrassing, right? Because it's obvious, and it's embarrassing, and it's obvious at the same time. And because digital today is, is, is not a medium or a channel, it's literally everything. And when you have options like augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, connected homes, robots, artificial intelligence, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it doesn't make it. It's not that fast. Ooh. What's wrong with this? We will take the, oh, I have to press the button. OK, traveling to the past again. Oh, la, 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 la. La, 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 So we are betting ourselves and not, not try to follow any single trend of inspiration. So I want to talk about this project. And, oh, I hope this works. I don't know what happened is. Spotify, we made last year a project for them, like to the year music. It was like gathering all the data they have from the users and created a beautiful uh, interactive experience, the classic digital thing. But this is not what we are most proud of. We are proud of this thing that I'm going to share. If this works, OK, it's working. And we went beyond digital. We tried to, OK, we'll just track the same things we are extracting from the, from the digital version and start to bring those insights into the real space. And we did the same. Instead of just using people, we used like neighborhoods in New York, and we just created the same experience for them. And we found pretty interesting stuff, like the most hip neighborhood in the world, Williamsburg. They were fans of Justin Bieber's. So deal with it, Williamsburg. And, and this is something that... So this was the campaign that was like in different uh, neighborhoods in New York. It was pretty cool. But the thing is, we are not digital creatives. We are creatives in the digital world, and that's what we like to think. So having said that, we said goodbye to Steam Digital. I love Keynote. <laughs> and, and we say hi to Steam Studios. And this is a sample of the things that we do.
So, okay, go ahead. That's great. So we're changing the name. So we want to acknowledge more than just like the different type of work that we do. But we are aware that work needs to, to change. And then that's why we are embracing this studio mentality right now. And I want to share with you some thoughts, insights about how to make your life harder. So we make our life harder in the studio so you can learn. It's like, this is the Hans uh, WTF project that we have. And I thought it was kind of like nice to have those. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you some, some pieces of advice on how you can make your life harder. The first one is never specialize. I'm going to give you a bit of context. Like running a studio in, in a major city is fracking brutal. So imagine New York is super expensive, a place to do business. You have to pay like huge rent. You have to pay like a lot of salaries. So you can imagine that perhaps they just going and playing safe is the, the right thing to do because you have like a huge amount of expenses. And then with like playing safe, it comes a specialization. And then I, I'm okay with people like, okay, I'm going to bet hard in, in VR or betting something different, but at some point, the trend is going to fade away, and then you're going to be trapped in that. And I think we, we are embracing this, like, okay, let's forget about everything. Let's try to do as many things as we can. Because life is, is about, about choices. So this is reality. I, when I saw this tweet, I, I, I said, oh, I want to kill myself. But in the studio, we are just like pretty aware that we have to do as many things as we can. And I want to share with you one of our favorite projects from last year, the Hidden Worlds of the National Parks, that actually was like a project that tapped almost every skill set in the studio, and we learned some of the things uh, with it. Here's the intro. This guy is awesome, by the way. Our national parks are wonderlands, amazing places to explore and discover. The beauty, it's obvious but there's a hidden world you won't see on any map. To find that world, you need a guide. He's an actor, come on, that's great. Park rangers know where to look, where to listen, where to climb, where to dive. Join them on an adventure to discover the parks in a completely new way. Come explore the hidden worlds of the national parks. So last year, it was the 100th anniversary of the national parks in the US. I'm European, and we have like ancient history, history, like beautiful art. I'm from Spain, so we have Goya, Velázquez, and all those like great painters. We have like 2,000-year architecture, but you guys, you have those beautiful wild places that are so cool that I have, I'm, I'm really jealous. And then, oh, I pressed the button, sorry. Oh, oh. What's wrong with me? I have my day today. I don't mind. I'm cool with it. OK, so we partnered with Google to bring five of those par parks to life and appealing for people that never been there or even for people that was that's been there in, in, in the past. So I have to say one thing. We have to be like, we have to say thank you to the National Park uh, Service that they led us to shoot in, in those beautiful locations, but especially the rangers. The rangers are people that are devoting, devoting their lives to live in a specific area and learn everything about it. And then we thought that it was like the best people that can be the, the people that are leading the, the, the interactive experience. So you are going to see the park with people that know it at its best. And it was a monster production. So this, this map is going to explain, uh, the, get the dimension of, of what it was to shoot in those locations. It, it's always complicated to, to, to like live shooting is complicated. But we had to do this in 26 days. It was kind of like a master, a monster production, as I'm saying. And it was super intense. You can see some, some behind the scenes here. So we partnered with Google, with Ghost Robot, and with the Rangers that were like super generous with the time and, and, and the knowledge. And we shot on, 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 on the underwater, above water, and in volcanoes, in, in caves. It was crazy. We saw like 360 degrees films, and we recorded ambisonic sound. And, and as I'm saying, these are the behind the scene photos. So you cannot 
they look a bit glamorous, I think, because you cannot smell those photos. So <laughs> the days between showers was kind of interesting. And with the, those films, we have uh, three interactive pieces that are like, giving that extra layer of, of knowledge and content. And the first one was in the Kenai Fjords in, in Alaska, where you can see the impact of the climate change uh, in the glacier there in only 12 years. It's pretty depressing, actually. Another one that is pretty cool that is in the Bryce Canyon in, in southern Utah. This is the, the, one of the darkest places on Earth, and it's like almost no light pollution. So when you have, when you're in the night, you have that beautiful sky. So we created an experience that you can just explore the sky and know more about constellations and what it meant for, for people, for the natives uh, back in time. And this one in the Carlsbad uh, Caverns in, in New Mexico, where you could experience what is being inside the head of a bat and see what they see. They see in complete darkness using echolocation. And we thought that this, is, this is, was a, an experience that was a slightly more abstract than the, than the rest. And that's why we thought, OK, we need to give a bit of context. So we thought it was interesting to, to create an intro. And this when Aaron enters the story. Who's Aaron? Aaron is our design, was our design intern last summer. And I swear to God that we gave him a chair. Because I don't want to think that we are treating interns that way. So Aaron was in the last year of design school. And, and when we were like thinking about that, I said, hey, I want to, to make that intro. And I said, OK. Uh, we are pretty proud of ourselves in the sense that like we are pretty flat. Of course, we have titles, we have hierarchy. But in the studio, we are, all of us were entitled to do things that are not exactly the things that we are like, supposed to do. And he said, OK, I want to do this. So I have experience, but I want to, to do it. And he spent, I don't know if it was like almost three months, like watching YouTube tutorials to, to make this. Echolocation allows bats to navigate in total darkness. Eight seconds of magic. I, I fucking love it. <laughs> and, and, and this is how he did it. And that leads me to the first takeaway. That is, experience is overrated. Incredible passion always beats expertise. And that's true. I prefer a, a rookie that is like extremely passionate than a classic lazy expert that he knows or she knows that knows everything. Because when you have that passion, like everything is super, super, super. It comes together. And a side note on Arn's story. So when he was at the internship in, at Stink, so he also turned 21, and as you know, he's the legal drinking age in, in the US. So to celebrate that, we take him out. And then he got so drunk that he had to cancel the dinner he had planned with his parents, who flew, flew from Michigan for the occasion. And we felt pretty bad. And, and to meet up with him, we made that cake that is celebrating the two major achievements <laughs> that he made at Sting, like that's really bad, and getting fucking drunk. So, and one happy note, he's starting this month as a full-time employee, as a motion designer. So, Aaron is fucking great. You have to, to follow him on Twitter and all that. Okay, moving on. Next piece of advice is be your own client. We spend a lot of time working for our clients and we forget how to, like, we can work for ourselves as well. Because it's hard to find that time, that space to make those, those projects to happen. But when you find the time, I think that pays you like, with, with like, more tools that you can do amazing stuff. And of course, you can learn more things on the way. And I'm going to share with you a few projects. I'm going to talk about Rita. What's Rita? We'll get to that. So we are asked a lot to do personalized video, but a lot. We did in the past for Nike and for Airbnb. 
but we never found um, like a process or something or a tool that can make us do this more efficiently. So we, since we couldn't find that in the market, where well, we say, okay, let's create one. And we created Rita. What's Rita? Besides being a beautiful woman's name, actually stands for rendering in the air. That is a cloud uh, rendering like system where we can generate in real time like, literally millions of videos, personalized videos. So we grew it from a command line tool into a full product that we are using in, for our clients. The mechanics are pretty simple. I'm not going to like, talk about too many technicalities. Classic thing. You get a source. The source can be, I don't know, your Instagram feed, Facebook, photos, whatever you want to have the data. And then you have a video. You can just track it. You can just map it. And then you blend it, mix it in, on Rita, and you have literally millions of, of, of videos that are personalized and you can share and all the things that people love. So we did it for one of our clients, Strava. Strava is a social network for cyclists. And we're working for them for, for a few time. And uh, you know, you can get like longest routes, I don't know, best times, etc. So all this data you, they are collecting from their, their users, we put it in a beautiful 3D video, we mixed it, and this is one example of how it looked. Over a million videos, personalized videos we, we created for, for them. takeaway here is that don't let your tools define what you can do, make new tools instead. Because it's the same, working for your clients or working for yourself is always to, likes to make your life harder uh, to eventually make things easier. Another project I want to talk about in, in this uh, Be Your Own Client is one for Pinterest that we did in the London office. They came up with a problem, like in the UK people use Pinterest for planning like big events like a wedding or a home renovation, but they are not using the tool to to everyday life, like planning like uh, the next uh, dinner or, or planning a like fashion inspiration. So we created a campaign for them uh, that was pretty much trying to translate that everything can be inspiration. So we launched it on TV, and then we got one of the last sentences before a commercial break, and we took that sentence and we made it into Pinterest search. We did it for a famous show there that I know was pretty crappy, but you can see it here. Made in Chelsea, it's called. Did everyone enjoy my cheese and wine evening? You did so well. It was great, other than the smell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Did everyone enjoy my cheese and wine evening? It wasn't only this for, for, for TV, so we did this for like TV, for out of home, did out of home, display, and it was that, trying to translate those searches that you can do in Pinterest and then bring it into a, like a snippet of inspiration. We even just like took over a subway station in, in, a, in a popular like fashion area. Like for the summer festivals in Glastonbury, for instance, and you can see all these personalized searches and get inspiration before going to the malls and, and, and buy stuff. So you can imagine that it's a lot of work to do, but it's a lot of work to manage as well. So we're a small studio. So you cannot just throw people, hey, you, can, you need to create like hundreds of assets and have it done like tonight because, you know, like, feedback rounds, etc. So we thought, okay, how can we just make this easier for us and for the client? And we build a tool called PETA. You can sense a trend. We like to... In this case, PETA doesn't actually st uh, stands for anything. Oops, I made... It's my day today. Uh, this is pretty simple. You can pick a color 
after picking a color, you just type the, that sentence, then you select those words that you, can, you want to use as a keyword, then you can curate results from the actual platform, and then you can make the final tweaks, the animation, and how it, how it appears in, in, in those like, pieces. And that can be done by us and by the client. So it's pretty, like, actually, it's great because you don't have to wait for a designer to fire up Photoshop, or you not, don't need to, to wait for the client to come up with feedback, and then you have to do small tweaks. They can do it on the go with the, with the tool. So our takeaway here is that managing the work is just as important as doing the work. And in, in the case of Pinterest, is maybe even more important because we prefer instead of like throwing people to the problem, we prefer to create tools instead. And the last point is I want to tell you what it means to be a learning studio because your student days never end. And the perfect example for this is a project we did for, for the new school. The new school is a, a progressive uh, university in, in New York, and the hallmark of their approach is that they are super interdisciplinary. So for the recruitment campaign, we came up for, with an idea about an outdoor installation that, since they are super interdisciplinary, to activate it, you need two people to do it. So they loved the idea, we loved it as well, that's cool, but it was a problem but that we have never done before an installation. And we have a rule at the studio that we call the 70% the rule. And if a client comes and says, okay, I want this, and we know how to do it in 70%, we say, we take the job. And that led us the 30% of panic. And we have to figure out how to do it. Being honest, we are always honest with the client, and we say, okay, we don't know how to do this. Uh, but, but this is good because you can just like, work together to make things happen. In this case, we started with the 70% that we know. That is building a particle system. This is an example of how we just bring into life in code. It's the desktop environment where we're testing behaviors and interactions. And then the 30% that we didn't know, like, like depth sensing, like setting 6K projector matrices, permitting, building a massive monster. We started to, to, to build the thing, and then one of the cameras wasn't giving enough precision, so we had to add a second camera, meaning that we had to rewrite like shit, tons of code. It was like insane. And even the, the city permit, permit uh, service told us, OK, you have to secure the thing, because it's so big that if you don't have a high, set, high tension wires, you're going to kill people when you are doing this. And things that you're learning in that 30% of chaos. And this is how it looked. The most valuable skill you have is the ability to learn new ones. That's fucking true. Because we are proud of our craft skills, but I think that the best skill you can have is like the ability to learn new things. Because that's, for me personally, I think that's the, the, the mentality of a studio. And I'm going to become emotional right now in the final takeaway. Because this presentation has been about us, but in reality, it's been about you guys. So it's about those small studios that are the, the fuel of the, the industry, that are like, fighting against like seamless, those like template world that we're living in, and, and trying to boost the industry. And I want to acknowledge those small studios that are speaking here, like Active Theory, Bueno, Watson, I'm going to forget some, Fantasy, Zach Meister and Walls, and I forgot the rest. But never mind, you know who you are. And people that are here freelancing, 
like people that are in small studios actually here in the in the audience, people that are thinking on joining one or even starting one, you are the fucking heroes of the industry. So and, and, and we as think we love you all. Because it's one thing. We have the opportunity to to make the world a better place. And if that's not worth making our life harder, I don't know what that is. So So that was everything. Thank you, and I hope you keep enjoying the show.